Greatness shows up after you're tired. Let's say it one more time, man. Greatness shows up after you're tired, not when you're tired. And breakthroughs don't happen until you reach your breaking point. Been there many times, man, at that place I didn't want to go on. And I realized that strength can't develop until your strength is gone. You got to keep pushing because character and courage is developed or lost when you decide to keep going or to give up. You see, that's the point. You got to stop and you got to realize that's your breakthrough coming right there because when others that are around you won't, you will be the one that goes ahead. Somebody has to step up and go a little bit farther. Is that somebody you? How many says that's me? I want to go a little farther. Welcome to our show, Furthermore, where you're going to find education, motivation, and inspiration. I'm Dr. Mark. And I'm Dr. Michelle. And we are here to push you and encourage you to go a little further in all aspects of your life, to do more and become more than you ever thought possible. So education is the key and information is the king, but wisdom will always remain supreme. So prepare yourself for the latest news and hottest headlines. Truth bombs, amazing guests, relevant and impactful information, and life-changing plans. You are being prepared for the best days of your life. So buckle those seat belts and put those tray tables in the upright position and prepare yourself for the greatest journey of your life. Right here, right now. On Furthermore. Furthermore. We are glad, welcome to our show. This is gonna be a great time as always, and. We are really keyed up because we've got some intense, heavy, hot, and entertaining subjects to talk about. Remember, being in prison is being in bondage, and nobody likes to be in bondage. We hear all this talk today about freedom, 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 liberty, liberty, liberty. But did you know that many people are choosing to live in bondage by failing to understand hope, health and freedom truly. And that's the theme that's gonna be overriding all of our shows. And to do that, we wanna give you some great information. And we get in this idea of tonight as we kick off our program, this idea of omega-3s. There's something called the omega index out there. What is that and what does that mean? And what are some benefits of omega-3s? Yes, well, we definitely know that the omega-3s can, 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 can contribute to cell membrane health. Every single solitary cell membrane in your body is made up of omega-3s. Then we know the brain is important for, to have these omega-3s in it from the time the fetus is formed to the memory of adult brain health in our later years. Brain cells have high levels of omega-3s in their membranes and are thought to be at a better communicating with other cells when that content is high. If omega-3s aren't there, the cell membranes will take up omega-6s. Omega-3s are also very relatable to heart health. As decades ago, researchers observed that eating fish communities had very low rates of heart disease. And this was related to the omega-3s. Omega-3s actually bring down triglycerides. And did you know that high triglycerides is a risk factor for sudden cardiac death? So omega-3s do a heart good. They also help with blood pressure. They help to reduce blood pressure in individuals with high pressure. It also has been shown that omega-3s increase that HDL. You know, that's called the good cholesterol. And get this, blood clots, omega-3s can decrease platelets from clumping together. And omega-3s can also take down systemic inflammation and decrease that pain signal. So once again, omega-3s do a body good. So we need those omega-3s and the problem is we're not getting enough. We need about three grams per day to get the omega index up there to about eight. The reason we have so much problem today is because there's too many non-omega-3s out there. These processed, highly heated seed oils, man, they're bad. And they are so bad 
that it's unbelievable the effects they have in our body. Check out this video to explain all of that. Vegetable oils belong in the engines of cars, not in your food. These are not real food products. These are products made in factories. These are products that require heat and chemicals and high pressure to extract what little oil there is. The heat and chemicals used in the manufacturing process oxidizes these delicate seed oils. When you eat oxidized vegetable oils like soy, canola, corn, and safflower or sunflower, they create free radicals throughout your body that are highly inflammatory and known to cause heart disease and cancer. Why are we always trying to eat more antioxidants? To combat free radicals like the ones found in refined vegetable oils. And then they're used by restaurants in the most, in, in the most carcinogenic way possible. They heat them, reheat them, cool them off, heat them again, and use them for a week. So switching to vegetable oils or seed oils was probably a terrible idea in the first place. One researcher from the University of Minnesota went to a variety of fast food restaurants in her neighborhood and purchased french fries, and then took them back to her lab for testing. She found numerous compounds of toxic aldehydes in the fries. Aldehydes are known to cause gene mutation, alter RNA and DNA, and trigger massive inflammation in the body. Vegetable oil is highly toxic, and anyone who advises people to eat vegetable oils is also giving misinformation. I tell my clients to avoid the industrial seed oils as much as possible. Vegetable oils belong in the engines of cars, not in your food. Refined vegetable oils are one more reason you should avoid fast food and processed food. If it comes in a bottle or a box, it probably contains vegetable oils, from crackers to cookies, mayonnaise to salad dressings, baby food, and even baby formula. There you go. Vegetable oils belong in cars, not, not in, in human, human beings. Body. And yet here we are having these things pushed by our own government. How disgusting is that? How sad is that and how almost criminal that is. Remember, when we talk about omega-3s as unlike the omega-6, the highly processed seed oils that we just talked about, these benefits are profound. I mean, first of all, you think about the membrane, but that brain, I mean, you talk, I want my brain to work, don't you? Absolutely. I want it to have fluid communication with all the brain cells around it. So every thought I have connects to the next one. Oh, totally. And you know, you want your brain to build a fire, if you will, on every cylinder. And it cannot do that without omega-3 fatty acids. The brain is the majority uh, controlled by fat. Now, the heart is a big deal because without the heart's functionality, you will die. It pumps the blood around. We know that these omega-3s deal with pain and joint pain, and they're credibly anti-inflammatory. Yes, We boy, that, need these things. It's so interesting that they... they down-regulate that inflammatory mm -hmm. signal that comes from omega-6s. Oh, my friends, we've got to get omega-3s. And again, three grams per day. We like BioOmega 1000. That's what we use. You can find that on our website, of course. And the dose for us is three or three grams, and that will get your omega index up there to at least eight is where it needs to be. Make sure you check it right. So, folks, after the break, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about lifestyle principles. We're going to talk about this thing called DNA. Wow. You don't want to miss that. Stay with us. Drugs, drugs, and more drugs. Everywhere you turn, you hear about drugs. You hear about them during your favorite television show, sporting event, or even interrupting any broadcast for that matter. The repetitive frequency of this marketing propaganda makes one wonder if we were actually born with drug deficiencies. Good news is we're not. No one is born with a drug or vaccine deficiency. We develop nutrient deficiencies because we don't consume real food, which does lead to disease processes. Instead of looking for a pill for an ill, we should start looking for what may be missing in our nutritional intake. Listen, the standard American diet kills. How about making better decisions about what we consume? Here's to having a salad. Here's to having a salad. A salad. I'm telling you, man. Uh, and how about that saying? We got some brand new sweatshirts we'll talk about soon that, that say right on them, 
a pill for an ill is not, not God's, God's will. will. It's really good. So we're <laughs> anxious to we'll get you a picture of those when we get them in stock. But we've got those created. They're amazing and awesome. When we talk about this idea of a salad and, you know, really not leaning towards a pill for an ill, we got to talk about these things called lifestyle. Our lifestyle uh, practices that we do are really, really important. And there are seven things that we really do and address. Yes, at the top of the list is gonna be nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition is the most important medical decision that you make every single day. Our bodies are not drug dependent. They are nutrient dependent. And we need nutrients to drive cellular function and even make energy. And of course, we've got to get sleep. We've got to get six to eight hours of sleep with both REM and non-REM type sleep. We talked about that, that there has to be a balance and it's got to be quality. We also definitely know we need to manage stress with movement. We've got to move. Movement gets blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the tissues. That thing that's at the end of your fork, it's either good for you or not. It's either healthy or not. It's either driving you to be energized or giving you a headache and causing inflammation. So we have to put all of these principles into play, make time for them, and then we can go on to focus on other things. Now, genetics, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, you may be born with a certain set of genes. However, that does not mean that you have to have a negative outcome. Did you know that proper food that comes in, the best, the biggest decision we make medically, the most important one is where? It's at the end of your fork. It's we call it fork curls. Fork curls. So when you're at the table, you want to try to practice how many fork curls you can do with greens on the end. Seriously, that's an important thing, little tip. But that will ensure that your DNA is held and protected appropriately. The DNA is going to be the 23 chromosomes that come from both your mom and dad and get housed inside the nucleus of cells. We talked about a couple weeks ago, the anatomy of a cell. Remember, the nucleus houses the DNA. And the DNA is this home of all these recipes that make these proteins and tissues that construct organs and organ systems and then the organism. It all is about our DNA and our DNA doesn't determine sickness or anything. It just determines vulnerabilities. And so we analyze a full panel of DNA and we find it very, very beneficial to giving people a plan so that they can actually have a, a protective lifestyle, if you will. Yeah. So when we're looking at genetics, your personal DNA, we're do you carry that ApoE4 gene, the gene that codes for Alzheimer's? If you do, boy, you should definitely not be living the standard American diet and you should be getting plenty of omega-3s because the brain, it loves that DHA. And somebody who has ApoE4 cannot offload DHA to the brain appropriately. So we need a little bit extra. It also looks at detoxification pathways. Those detox pathways, why does one person get cancer much quicker and, sit and easier than another person? Oftentimes, it's because not only do they necessarily eat poorly, but they can't detoxify it either. Inflammatory pathways, inflammation. Some systems are predisposed to have an upregulated inflammation mm. pathway. Therefore, if we're bombarding this system with the standard American diet, that's inflammation on top of inflammation. And inflammation is the precursor to all chronic sickness and disease. It even looks at oxidative stress. You may not know what oxidative stress is, but your body does. If you're rusting faster than you're reducing those oxidative stress processes, boy, you can look older quicker. You can feel sicker quicker or be sicker longer and more often. So with genetics, it helps us understand you all the way down to that DNA level the code, the genes that you were born with, not your blue genes, but what's inside the cell in the nucleus. We can understand that and put together a life plan that's gonna fit you personally as far as supplementation, nutrition, what's at the end of your fork, and even exercise. Some people need a little higher intensity exercise than others. Others need to walk in the park. Some need a little bit of both and a lot more often. It depends upon what is that recipe that your genes are saying inside your cells. The fascinating thing about genes is that they've changed only 2% in 10,000 years. 
Well, that's right. When Noah and his wife hopped off the boat and sort of with their sons and daughters and waded through all those dead bodies that are still floating around and rotting in front of them and decaying. Don't think about that, do you? Waiting on the greenery to grow up around them. They actually had the same genes that we do. And so they were given instructions from God on what to eat and how to take care of themselves. And as they followed those instructions, they had nice long lives with none of these little diseases of the affluent, which I like to say is like type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's, dementia, cancers, heart disease, autoimmune, all these things we don't need to have and we weren't designed to have. The problem with all this is the idea that we've looked at genes the wrong way. We've looked at them as the cause of the disease when it's actually the environment's cause of the disease. The genes load a gun and the environment pulls the trigger. It's really an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? So when you actually check the right things and you want to get with us to do that, we actually can use those genetic coded information pieces that we got from our parents that sort of are passed down from our past. Our past is speaking to us and saying, hey, this is what we've got to do to stay well. We can put a plan together to give you confidence to know that we have now a predictable pathway that's going to lead to less diseases. I don't know, friends, about you, but when I look at genes, I'm thinking that's the greatest source of information that I could ever have. That's the hand of God. He looked at us and he scripted together. He made with his hands. He needed together in the womb these genes that we have. Amazing, amazing stuff. God didn't make a mistake in knitting you and I together, did he? Hey, when we get back, we're going to talk about something you don't want to miss, the distraction of deception. I want you to think about that and listen super carefully when we get back. Stay with us. Well, that's like a marriage made in hell, isn't it? You know, like I look at the Food and Drug Administration and think, what do they have in common? You know, Hippocrates, did he say, let drugs be thy medicine? Or what did he say? He said, let food be thy medicine oh. and let medicine be thy food. Oh, my God. So therefore, the most important medical decision that you make every single day is at the end of your fork. We call it fork curls. I've experienced tremendous hurts in my younger years. Abandonment, abusive relationships, career ending, injury, and even homelessness. Yes, really. For a long time, I let resentment and unhappiness pile on and keep me from moving forward. So right now, I just want you to know one thing. It's not too late for you. Recently, my wife and I were at the Reawaken America tour that's hosted by Clay Clark and General Michael Flynn. And many times we'll be inspired to just stop at the side um, of a hallway in a hotel and just give you something from our heart. We did that recently at the Reawaken America tour in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We talked about the distraction of deception. Check this out. Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about the deception of distraction. And I think this is very important for all of us out here because when we lose focus, we lose the ability to stay on task. If you lose the ability to stay on task, you get so far away from your goal and missions that you might find yourself multiple degrees off course. So the deception of distraction can be categorized into four areas. So pay attention carefully and write this down. Death disease, sickness, and lack. Four areas of deception, one more time. Death, disease, sickness, and lack. We all know that when we're focused on death, disease, sickness, or lack, we know that that takes away your focus because your whole world, your whole life is centered around these fears that really wrap around death, disease, sickness, and lack. So what do you do? I'm gonna break these down for you one at a time. First of all, with the idea of death. Look, death is sure, we know that. But death, if you think about it like this, death is sure, sin is the cause, but Christ is the cure. What does that mean? 
that means that we are all going to die one day. These mortal flesh suits we walk around and we're going to expire. These organ systems we have are going to run out of time. They're going to run out of function. And when they start getting dysfunctional, that's the death process. It's ashes to ashes, it's dust to dust, if we want to look at it like that. But if we have a relationship with Christ and for who he is, we don't need to fear death. The reason people get mad sometimes at Christians is because we might flaunt over the idea that we have a relationship with Jesus, so therefore we're not afraid of death. Understand that some people may not believe that. Personally, this is what Dr. Michelle and I believe. We believe that God sent Jesus to earth to die for us, to pay for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. And then he defeated death and the grave so that we could also have life with him. We believe that. So therefore, death to us has no sting. Do we enjoy the process or the thought of it? No. But we cannot get distracted about the idea of death because when we get distracted about the idea of death, we forget to focus on life. And Christ is not about making death more beneficial. He's making about life more being, or make, made about life being more optimal, life being more abundant. So we need to focus on life and not death. Remember, death is a distraction. Now, when we talk about sickness and disease, I want to put those two, the second and third distractions, into a category here. Sickness and disease. For the last two and a half years, there has been so much focus on sickness and disease, it really has taken away the idea of living. It has been said that the pandemic was not about COVID at all, but it was about fear, because fear killed more people than COVID ever could. I submit to you that indeed fear is a pandemic, fear of death, fear of sickness, and sick, fear of disease. So how do we combat that? Again, we talked about death. What do we do with sickness and disease? It's not that complicated. Think about this. We do what we can do, knowing we're gonna die, so that we can live the fullest in our life. In other words, we wanna live in a way to decrease sick span and increase optimal lifespan. How do we do that? We understand that this thing walk around in this, this physical suit is called the temple. Why? It's because this is an area where God can live if we allow him. Even if we don't believe that, even if we believe that God made the body, we still must understand he made the body in his own image. So therefore, we're the greatest creation of all. So if we take care of this thing, this flesh suit, and my wife calls it the skin bag. She's got a beautiful skin bag, by the way. But the bottom line is we need to take care of it. How do we do that? We begin to understand the four things we have control over, and that would be nutrition, sleep, stress management, and movement. One more time, nutrition, sleep, stress management, movement. These are things we have control over, and those are things that we lose control or give over control over to this crazy world. We begin to live like the world in those ways. If we live like the world in those ways, the world is scared of sickness and disease, aren't they? Isn't that what we've been focused on? So let's do everything we can from a pharmaceutical capacity to ensure that we don't get sick and we don't have disease. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Are any of us born with vaccine or medication deficiencies? No, clearly not. Are we saying that vaccines or medications are bad? No, clearly not. We're saying we have a choice. Those should not be first line therapy. Those should be last line therapy and only as necessary and as indicated. What does that mean? We need to take care of our own self. This idea of self-government we talked about is a big deal. We need to begin to eat real food, move more, sleep more, watch who you hang out with so stress doesn't get a hold of you, watch who and what you pay attention to. So hang out with hope leaders, right? There's a point there. So we talked about death, disease, sickness. What about lack? That's the last one, number four. Lack is the fear of not having enough. Some would call it the poverty mentality. I'm always gonna be never gonna have enough money. I'm never gonna have enough to do that. I can't do that because I don't have any money. The more you say that, the more it becomes a crutch. Let us understand the way out of this fear of lack is understand that abundance and, and really provision comes from God himself. We are on earth not to just make as much money as possible. No, we're on earth to shine the light as bright as possible and along the way, God is gonna provide. So in other words, I don't have to fear lack because money's just a tool that is used in the bartering system we have right now. And it's interesting to think about how people fear 
not having it, or they, they fear that they won't ever have enough so much, it prevents them from having anything. And so folks, we need to really get this idea that the deception of distraction with these big four, death, disease, sickness, and lack, cause a massive, massive problem in our life. We've given you tools to get out of that thing. Now, put these tools into action, put them into practice. And when you do, you'll find out that your life becomes a little bit better. So folks, I hope this helped you, I hope it encouraged you. We hope that it gives you hope so that the deception of distraction will be something you can put behind you and you can focus on your mission. God bless you all. Boy, the deceptions of distraction. Don't focus on that. Sickness, disease, lack. Boy, we've got to take care of these skin bags, dirt, dirt suits, temples, or whatever you'd like to call it. For when we go home to eternity, all we do is change addresses. Join us next time on Furthermore, where we can't wait to talk to you about the three chairs. These three chairs all start with C. The chair of conflict, the chair of commitment, and the chair of compromise. Which chair do you find yourself sitting in or which chair do you want to be in? It's totally up to you. I tell you what, man, I want to be sitting in the chair of commitment, but how do you get there? How do you stay there? How do you get firmly planted there? We'll show you next time right here on Furthermore. Furthermore. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, I, I um I was trying to buy Laura Trump a gift for her birthday. Uh -huh. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some inside connections I have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call Sherwood, and I'm going to order some Kingdom Fuel. Well, in my hand, I have Kingdom Fuel. And not, not because, you know, we uh, simply invented this thing. It's because it actually does supply a need, Clay. It's organic um, pea protein, which is the least allergenic potential of all of them out there. Uh, it has a complete fiber complex, soluble and insoluble complete vitamins and minerals wow. and complete greens and reds. So it truly is a whole meal for just under $5 per serving.